Hey everyone, this is Alex from WarnOffKeys.com, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own configuration files for your Minecraft plugins. Before we start, I want to quickly mention that I'm going to be making my own server live here on YouTube. So if you're interested in watching how that works, as well as interact in public beta testing, head over to BlockBlast.net. It should send you to a page like this one, where you can join the Discord server for more information. So there's actually a decent amount of things I'm going to be showing you within this video, as well as a couple of best practices, so I encourage you to watch the full video. The first thing I want to show you is how to create your own built-in config.yml file, which will be stored in the same directory as your plugin YML file. So go ahead and right-click on Source, go to New, File, and name this config.yml. Now typically this file will be used to store a lot of pre-built configuration, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create your own set spawn and spawn commands that will load a location from this config file. So to do that, we'll first create a basic example. Let's say we have spawn. And then after I press enter, we have these two spaces right here. And this is important, which I'll come back to later on. We can now have nested properties here, such as the world. Because if we go into our folders here, we see we have the world folder right here. So the default name of your world should be just simply world, unless you specifically changed it. We also can have our X, Y, and Z values. And of course, these should be actual values, but for now, we'll just add in zero. We'll use the set spawn command later on in this video to go ahead and actually set real values. We also have yaw at 0.0, .0 and pitch at 0.0, .0 and these will be the direction you're looking for your player. So the first thing we want to do with this is to make sure that this configuration file is going to be created within our plugin folder. And to do this, it's actually very simple. Because config.yml is known as the default configuration, within our on enable, we can simply just say, save default config. And this is built into the Java plugin class. So because we extend it here, we can automatically use it. So now with that said, let's take a quick look inside the plugin folder. And here we see our project jar but we do not see a folder for our project. In fact, the folder would be called the same name as your plugin YML, in this case, worn off keys tutorial. So let's go ahead and compile this and see if that folder and our config.yml is created. So I can go to build, build artifacts, and then press enter. So the folder was just created for me, and as you can see, it's the same name as the name specified in our plugin YML. So if I open this, we see a config YML. If I open that, we then see the default config that we just created. So that's working fine. Let's go ahead and read and write to this configuration file. So under commands, I'm going to make a new class right here, and I'm going to call this spawn. And this will be the file that holds both the spawn and the set spawn command. Now I'll be using the basic command base that I made in a previous video. If you have a different way to create your commands, feel free to use that. And if you want to learn how to make this file, check out the full playlist for this entire series in the pinned comment. So going into our spawn file, we need to create our own constructor. So I can say public spawn. And now we can create two commands. The first command I want to create is to be able to set or write our current player's location to the config.yml file. So I can say new command base. We're going to pass in set spawn as well as true. And this will make it so our command is called set spawn and it is a player only command. So behind the scenes, our command base class will make sure the console cannot run this. Now within here, we have to override two methods, the public boolean on command. We're going to have a command sender. I'm going to call this sender. We'll also have a string array, which I will call arguments. Now for now, I'll just simply return true. We'll come back to this method later. And the second method is going to simply return the usage for set spawn. So we can override public string get usage. And I'm not going to ask them to provide their own X, Y, Z values. Instead, I'll just use the player's current location. So there's no arguments here. So I can simply just return set spawn. Now I'm going to simply copy this right here. And I'm going to paste it below. And I'm going to change this to just simply spawn. I'll also change the usage here to spawn. We want to first enable a cooldown as well as set permissions. So I can enable a delay of two seconds, and then I can say set permissions, and we can add in whatever permission node we want. We'll go into more detail about permissions in the later video, but for now, just simply add spawn.set. So now let's gain access to our actual configuration. 
So within the constructor, I want to gain access to our plugin. So I can say my first plugin, and I'll call this plugin. And this is the name of the class that is our main file right here. So within here, I'm looking to make a new instance of the spawn class. So I can say new spawn, and I can pass in this. This obviously refers to itself, which is the type my first plugin, which is exactly what we're looking for right here. So now within set spawn, I first want to get access to the actual player because command center here could be a player or could be the console. Because we specified player only is true right here, we know for sure that this command sender is going to be a player. So I can say player, player equals cast of player, sender. So I now have the player who ran the command, and I can then get the location from that player, equals player dot location. So now here, we're going to gain access to the configuration and then write certain fields. If we go into the configuration, we see spawn, and then nested inside of that, with two spaces before each of these, we see world, XYZ, and the yaw and pitch. We're looking to set all of these things from the location that we have right here. So I'm going to say file configuration config equals plugin dot get config. I can then say config dot set. I then want to say spawn dot world. And then here we can say location dot get world dot get name. Now the dot here is important because this specifies that we're going to access nested properties for this exact property right here. So going into config, we see how all these are indented. These are nested properties of the spawn property. So with that said, we can say spawn.world to access this value here, or spawn.x to access this value here, etc. So going back, we are now setting this field right here to location.getworld.getName. And we now want to do the same thing for the rest of these values right here. So let's start with x, y, and z. I can say config.set spawn.x location dot get block x. This will give us an integer value of the current x on the location. And now I can copy and paste this two times. I can change the second line to get block y and also spawn.y. And then I can change the last one to spawn.z and get block z. We now also want the yaw and pitch, which will be the direction that the player is looking. So I can copy and paste this two more times. And now I can say spawn.yaw and spawn.pitch. And now instead of get block x, I'm just going to say get yaw and get pitch. So now that we've saved all these, we want to make sure we actually write the updated information to the config file. So I can say plugin dot save config, and this will save all the changes here to the actual file. We now want to tell the user that this actually happened. So I can say message dot send to player. We can then say new spawn point set. And now I'm looking to actually create this spawn command here as well. So an important note when it comes to loading things or storing things into a configuration is that you want to do it as least as possible because a lot of people doing that at once, such as a lot of people running set spawn, will potentially lag the server. So with that said, we want to make sure we can only set this or load this whenever we actually need to. And when possible, we want to store this information in memory because it's much easier to access. Now, in this exact case of set spawn, because only certain people can access this, we don't have to worry about it that much. But when it comes to forward slash spawn right here, that anyone can access at any time and could potentially spam as well, we want to make sure we do not access the configuration file each time. So instead, I'm going to set my own private location variable right here. I'm going to call this spawn and set this equal to null. Now, what I want to do is every single time that we run set spawn, I want to not only update the configuration, but I'm also wanting to say spawn equals location. So now our local location variable here is updated every single time we run this command. But by default, this is null. So we need to make sure we can actually load this from the configuration whenever our plugin starts up. And we do not want to load it from the configuration whenever the spawn command is ran. Because basically there's no need, we can load it once and if it's ever changed, we know because of this command, and so we're storing it locally. So when the server starts up, we can easily access it. So I'm looking to gain access to all these pieces of information so we can create our own location. So I can say file configuration config equals plugin dot get config. 
And actually, because we're accessing this here, we might not need it right here. So this will still use the same object, which should still work. So now we can get access to the world name. So I can say string world name equals config dot get string. And we'll pass in spawn dot world. Because again, that's the path we have right here to access this value. Now, in theory, this might not exist. So I can say if world name is exactly equal to null, we can first return. But then above this, we want to log to the console that this field doesn't exist. So I can say bucket dot get logger dot warning. And we'll then pass in spawn dot world does not exist within config dot yml. So now afterwards, we're looking to get access to the actual world object because of course, this is just the name of the world. So I can say world, world equals bucket dot get world. We can pass in a UUID or a string. So here I can pass in world name. And now this world might not exist because a world might be deleted and the configuration might not be updated. So we want to make sure that the world actually exists. So I can say if world is exactly equal to null, we can first return so we don't forget that. And then we can add in another warning. So bucket dot get logger. And instead of warning, I'm actually looking to use severe because obviously this shouldn't happen. So I can now say world. I'm going to add in quotes within the string. And then I can insert in world name does not exist. So if the world is test, it will say world quote test end quote does not exist. Now afterwards, we can get access to our x, y, z, yaw, and pitch values. So I can say int x equals config dot get int. Can pass in spawn dot x. And then I'm going to copy this a couple more times. We can say int y and int z. And of course, we want z and y on the correct lines here as well. Now, when it comes to getting the yaw and pitch, we have access to config dot get double but we do not have access to config.getFloat. So we need to get these as doubles, but we need them as floats in order to create the correct location. So I can say float yaw equals a cast to float config.getDouble spawn.yaw. And in a similar way, we can say float pitch equals a cast to float config.getDouble spawn.pitch. So now that we have the actual world, as well as the coordinates, we can create our own location and assign that to our spawn location here. So I can say spawn equals a new location. And here we need to first pass in the world and then X, Y, Z, yaw, and pitch. So now locally, we have access to our location whenever the server starts up without us having to reach into the configuration again. And if the spawn ever does change, we are first updating in the configuration as well as locally. So this spawn variable here will always hold the correct spawn location. So with that said, our spawn command becomes very simple. We first have to simply get access to the player version of our command sender. So player, player equals player sender. And then we can simply just say player.teleport spawn. All right, so my server is now starting up. And I have my config YML open with all the default values at zero. So my goal now is to join and try the set spawn command. And ideally, we should see all these change. So I'm going to go over here next to this lava and I could do forward slash set spawn. It's going to say new spawn point set. And if I go into my configuration file, it's going to say that this has been updated. So I can click yes to refresh this. And we now see new values right here. So now going back into Minecraft, if I fly anywhere else, I do forward slash spawn. This now teleports me to the correct location. And of course, if I were to restart the server, everything would still work because we are actually loading the spawn point whenever the server starts up right here. So this is going to be how you can use the basic configuration built into Minecraft. And this might work for a lot of use cases, but I also want to show you how you can create your own custom configurations that aren't just called config.yml. So with that said, I'm going to stop the server. I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring on this project and I'm now looking to make a new package called util. So I can right click new package. I'll call this util and all of our utility can go in here. 
So for example, message, I can drag it in here. We want to make sure we refactor. So all the imports that are using message will be properly updated. And in a similar way, we can drag command base in there. And now I'm looking to go into util and make a new file. This will be called event util. And if you remember in a previous video, we had to register an event by accessing it within here. I'm looking for each individual component or each individual feature to be completely standalone, where the only thing I need to do is make a new instance of it, for example, here with new feed. Then the feed class should be responsible for registering all of its own events and commands. So if I no longer want this functionality, I can just remove this line or comment it out and it doesn't work anymore. So with that said, in order to do that, I'm going to make a static method in here that will simply just register the events for us. So I can say public static void register. And then the parameter we want will be a listener. And so within here, we can now register it by gaining access to our plugin instance right here. So within here, I can now say bucket dot get server dot get plugin manager dot register events. We can then pass in our listener and then we need an instance of our my first plugin class or whatever you named your main class here that extends to Java plugin. So in that case, I can just say my first plugin dot get instance. And now we can simply just call event util dot register this inside our constructors for any commands or features we have, and it will automatically register all those events for us.